Thank you, Mr Holabone. It's a pleasure to see you in the chair, and if my voice holds out, I'll be doing well to reach um, 10 minutes. I'm delighted to be able to speak in this debate this afternoon because I'm proud to say that Glasgow, the city I'm glad to represent, welcomes refugees. And this is a cross-party commitment that the city has. It was a Labour administration who first put a banner above the door of the city chambers. But it's a, con a commitment honoured by the SNP now in administration and by all of us who represent the city. And it is not just about the elected officials, Mr Hollabone. Um, the people of Glasgow have taken this to their hearts as well, um, including, I give the example of Selina Hayes, who founded Refugee, um, who, who encourages people in Glasgow to provide a welcome pack to refugees coming to the city, which includes, amongst other things, a letter from a local person welcoming, welcoming them to the city. It's a brilliant initiative, and other cities should take that up. It's, but it's important, Mr Hollabone, that we don't just say that we want to make people welcome. We must follow that through with deeds, with practical act actions to make people feel at home. Imagine yourself fleeing a situation of chaos, violence and fear, perhaps persecution and torture. It's been a long and difficult journey to sanctuary, but you're now in Glasgow. You've never heard of Glasgow before. It's raining. There are unfamiliar sights, smells, and you can't understand the language, not least because the little English you understand doesn't seem to be what people around you are speaking. We must not forget for a second, Mr Hall, about how, ch how challenging that can be. Not least that English, and particularly Glaswegian English, can be hard to master, but that people have come far and experienced so many things beyond our ken in coming here. St Albert's Primary in Pollock Shields recently put together a wonderfully moving theatre piece, piece with Baldy Bain Theatre in the tramway called Unpathed Waters, Undreamed Shores to bring that school community together and exploring exactly what that journey might feel like. There were multiple languages used, reflecting the diversity of languages used in the school and expression through dance and images. My favourite part of that performance, Mr Hollowbone, by far, was when a table where food, and, uh, where food had been shared was pushed away and a ceilidh began. And as the music and the dancers whirled, I saw a parent from the school standing at the side of the hall, absolutely agape in amazement at this spectacle. It was clearly very new to him. And to see our traditions through the eyes of somebody new gave me pause for thought. How best do we welcome people and what do we show them about our country? How do we encourage them to share and to take part? Helping people improve their English is absolutely crucial to integration. Without it, people can't speak to their neighbours or find their way in their new home. And I'm glad that the SNP Scottish Government has underpinned the commitment to welcome refugees with a strategy, welcoming our learners, Scotland's ESOL strategy 2015-20, to and with funding some 1.46 million in 2015-16. And that is a renewed strategy, it's a strategy that's been going on now for some time. Refugees and asylum seekers who have been granted a form of leave to remain, such as humanitarian protection, do not have to pay fees for ESOL courses in Scotland. And they may also be eligible for help towards living costs, for example, from college's discretionary funds and from the childcare fund. Asylum seekers who are waiting for a decision on their application are also eligible, as the Honourable Member from Meriden said, for free ESOL courses with no waiting period, and they may be eligible for support towards travel and study costs. ESOL provision in Scotland is also offered by a range of other providers, including community-based settings, voluntary organisations and in the workplace. In my wonderfully diverse community, there are many providers of English language teaching, not just for refugees, but for the full range of new Glaswegians. I was quite taken aback, Mr Hollowbone, looking at the huge range of classes available on the Learn ESOL Glasgow website. So many communities hosting sessions in their own areas, like Pollock Shields Community Centre, Govan Hill Neighbourhood Centre, Gorbals, Pollock Shields and Govan Hill Libraries, Tory Glen Community Base, the Guru Granth Sahib um, Gurdwara, the YCSA, particularly for young people, um, the Marie Trust and the Glasgow City Mission, who deal with people often facing homelessness. Glasgow Women's Library runs specialist women's groups. Uh, groups in Garnet Hill and groups run by the fantastic radiant and writer who work towards getting people into employment. That isn't even all of the classes, Mr Holborn. That's the tip of the iceberg. St Mungo's Academy um, have been running classes um, for parents and carers as well to further... Um, give them the opportunity to develop their English language skills through an evening ESOL class, which challenges some of the issue about children learning and parents perhaps not. Um, instructors from Glasgow Clyde College provide targeted support for those learning English for the first time or those um, improving their, school, their skills with a view to getting into more education or into employment. These learners can then at the end obtain a recognised SQA qualification on completion of the 10-week course. And this past year there has been a 100% pass rate and there's a higher ESOL, which is you know, a good standard and the numbers taking part are growing and I pay tribute to Janet Cardell and Jessica Longo who are the teachers at St Mungo's Academy who are taking this on. Um, Nan Mackay Community Hall have also been providing um, English language teaching for at least 14 years now in, in their wee community hall in Pollock Shields and it's a service very much in demand. 
And the beauty of that community base, uh, Mr Holborn, as opposed to the formality of a classroom and a college, is that the learners become well integrated into that community. Now Mackay Hall works closely in partnership with Glasgow Clyde College, who provide the tutors. And I'm sure it wouldn't be out of order to uh, thank Wendy, their kind and patient teacher, who the, the students really take to their heart. Um, they've got a lot of um, love for the, the time and the patience that she takes with them. And when I asked the staff um, at Nan Mackay Hall um, after my surgery last Friday to tell me a wee bit more about the classes, they said it worked well because people became friends. It wasn't just that they were coming in for the class and then leaving. Um, they now have people on their board who first entered that hall to join the ESOL class. They've got people who've gone on to other educational classes, computer courses, art classes, and they've been very much part of the life of that community. The community hall run trips um, down to the seaside, to the various different places, and there's a whole range of people that use that hall and the ESOL class attendees are part of that trip as well. Um, you've got brand new Glaswegians from Afghanistan, Iraq, Poland, Sudan, Greece, many more countries besides, and senior citizens who have lived nowhere else but Glasgow, all going away and all going to enjoy Scot the best of Scotland together. And that really is, um, Mr Hollibone, uh, an absolute credit to that community and to those types of initiatives. And I think that that's the kind of model that we need to be looking more at. When we've seen cuts being made to ESOL um, in, in England and other places. We've invested in that in Scotland because we know we can't afford to leave any of these um, communities behind and because they have so much to give um, to, their, to Glasgow. They are glad to be here. They want to be part of that community. And learning English is the absolute key to making that happen. Thank you very much.